finale of home safety hotline. I forgot to change the ticker on Twitch. Hang on. Hot safety hotline. Ooh. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> let's get it on screen. Uh, Furrow Pogerson chat says, Hey, uh, you Swedish bastard, it was my birthday yesterday and you didn't even, uh, well, happy late birthday. I hope you had a good birthday. I hope you had a lot of cake. And I hope that for your next birthday, you're not such an asshole. <laughs> That's my birthday present. <laughs> okay. No, but happy birthday. Okay. Here we go. So we're back with the finale of this. Let's see what the final level is like. It might not be a very uh, long stream for this segment, but we'll see. We'll see. See if I put these individually on YouTube or I glue them together. I'm not really sure yet, but um, we'll see. Daily coupons, Glamour Stone. Oh yeah, this fucking thing. We Almost for $2,000 we had, right? Entry browser. What's new here? I've had them all, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Sunday. Okay. Joel, I'm going to bed. Thanks for the moony. Well, you're welcome. I hope you cherish your Vard coins and, and all that jazz. All right, let's clock in there. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Thy trial has begun. Mm. Right, uh, boy oh boy, uh, not good. Um, oh boy. Yes, hello. We are many, we are above, we are false of the, our queen. What are we here? This is a old, uh, tricky question. This is one of those, uh, mind puzzles. Uh, a clock! A clock! A B! B clock! Please hold. Um. Oh, you, you want an actual answer? Holy shit. Fuck, what are we? Oh, fuck, I gotta... Ooh, what? What, you, you, you literally, you, you are beasts. <laughs> You're beasts. Your bees. <laughs> Showcase thy knowledge. Oh, this is all the shit. This is a super, super finale. Okay. I am not living, yet I clatter. I am small, I am weak, I serve my purpose. Then I die. What am I? Please hold. Uh, you are... Uh... Bees? Hang on, let's see. I am not living, yet I clatter. I am small, I am weak, I serve my purpose, then I die. What am I? Maybe the animation? I'm not living, it's gotta be animation. It just does its thing, you know? Huh? Forge ahead. House fire, probably, right? Yeah. Bugatti. Well, we'll see how. I am the beggar. I am the encroacher of the dry. I am a friend to the water of the sky. What am I? Gopher, house fire. Encroacher uh, of the dry. I am a friend of water of the sky. Please hold. Can I have like, what are they called? Like... Ah, fuck. Um... Naked Grandma. It's gotta be a rain nymph, right? I hope so. Puka. I don't think it's a puka, no. Press on, employee. Oh, bones. Wonderful. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, we'll see. Press 
press on employee. Oh, well, I'm waiting for your call, man. Yes. I am the har harbinger of death. I am the bringer of pestilence. I'm forever the nuisance. What am I? Gopher. Beast. Beast. Gopher. Fire. Uh. Shit, that could be a lot of things. Uh. I'm the bringer of pestilence. I am forever the nuisance. What am I? Um. Chat. Because <laughs> a lot of these things will kill you. But, I mean, I was going to say <laughs> mice. I was going to literally say mice. But mice and rats are different. I think mice... Well, I mean, they did bring the, the Black Plague to Europe. Um, I mean, I'm going to... Fuck it. Mice. We'll see. The house fly. <laughs> Rejoice. Okay. Well, uh, that was hamsters. Uh. <laughs> hamsters. Uh. See, I'm gonna be fucked up if they ask me about the gnomes and the hobs, because I I know kind of what they do, but like specifically each one. It, we'll see how cryptic it gets, I suppose. Uh. You guys remember hamster dance? All right. I seek the domains of those who have too much. Step within, and they lo lose their way. What am I? Portal? Mirror Nymph? Hmm. Please I'm gonna say portal. When I say too much, maybe knowledge or something? We'll see. We'll, we'll see what... Hmm. Okay, expand thy mind. Okay. Hey, let's l listen to jazz, everybody. Okay, it's not too hard so far, but we'll see. Expand thy dong. Expand dong. So that you clicked Half-Life. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, sorry. Who is it? He said it, he said it! We are companions of the gardens. Oh, we compel those who tread to tread no longer. What are we? You compel those who tread to tread no longer. What could it be the spriggan? Uh, or does we compel those who tread, tread to tread no longer? What are we? Please hold. What do I have here that could work? Hmm. I'm thinking the the sprig tree. The gardens we compelled those to tread tread no longer. Well, it's because they're stationary, you know. Like maybe a seedling. <sighs> Fuck, I forgot the difference. Shit. Hmm. Compelled the gardens we compelled those, but Spr I, I know that sprig tree is is the one where like people just straight up die, and these are more companions. So... <sighs> but spriggan is more like from the woods themselves. They're not like gardens. It could be, it could be. Fuck. There's that guy that looks like a garden tree, and he just is stationary there. You know. Um, fuck. What's he called? Uh, let's see here. Uh, was, that, was it the false rose bush? Mm. I'm gonna say the false rose bush. Fuck it. He might not like it. Let go of thy stilted soul. <laughs> okay. Oh man. I hope I'm doing okay. Okay. Let go of thy shit and soul. I am the dancer. I am the bringer of destruction. I consume the weak and the reckless. I am the forsaken oil and the careless light. What am I? I am the bringer of destruction. I consume the weak and the reckless. 
forsaken oil and the careless light. Too. This might actually be a house fire, like no joke here. Yeah. The forsaken oil and the careless light. Please hold. <laughs> Fucking house fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Termites. Uh, I am the storm that is approaching. <laughs> Descend. All right. Thy shitted soul. Your ex-wife. Hello, big old teeth, sir. I am the seeker, I am the one who delivers. What am I? Who delivers? Travel gnome? Please hold. Wasn't it, what do you call Dorcha again? About like, you know, I, I will arrive, I am the mailman. Fuck it, I'm gonna say Dorcha. And if you're marked for death, essentially, you're fucked, you know? I'm Mr. White Jism. I'm Mr. Spunk. Okay. I forgot about a door chase. It's basically like a thing that says, I will deliver, and if you are to be delivered, you are to die. You're fucked. Dorcha. Yes. Oh, hey. Hello. <laughs> Supervisor Carol here. We've been watching you closely. For all this time, you have been providing excellent and accurate Ooh. answers to our callers. Oh. These acts will not go unrewarded. Oh. I'm pleased to report that you have qualified for a promotion. Oh, really? Please stand by while I prepare thy promotion. Thy promotion. Fucking get that Fenta eyeball. Promotion in progress. Wonderful. Dad, there's a virus on the computer again. Oh, okay. Man, I hate promotion day. FMB Friday's back. But this is a Evanescence video. Come close. <laughs> is that a Faye? <laughs> Snap back to reality. Do you need to like need some sleep? <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Promotion. Hey, watch, watch the ears, okay? I got an infection. Okay. <laughs> Wow. All hail our new Yay! Congratulations, Sinji! Fuck, I'm a hippie now! What? The fuck is this? <laughs> this is. This sounds like the, the rat song from Jerma. Rats, rats, we are the rats. Birthday bash. <laughs> I got a Duende ending, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? This is a skeleton in the forest. Oh, okay. This looks like the troll song from Trolls 1. Compl oh, that was that was it! I did it. Okay, so uh, that was the bad ending. How do I get the good ending? Okay. Oh well, I'm I'm in the forest now. Art book. Okay. Hey, uh, I'm Nick Lives, the creator of Home Safety Lot Light. And if you're reading this, hope means you're invested enough in the game to be curious about its development. So if so, you come to the right place. This is a peek into the game's art development process and the human messiness that entails. Hope you enjoy this through, uh, thorough and in admittedly indulgent look into what was making the Home Safety. Okay. 
uh, influence. When I was about 10 or 12 years old, uh, my grandmother gifted me a Dungeons and Dragons monster manual she picked up from a thrift store. Immediately I fell in love with this book, despite having no idea what its purpose was. I would scare its pages constantly, learning everything I could about its many, many imaginative creatures. <laughs> I got a cough, hang on. Okay. Since I started developing games, I very much wanted to make a game about the pure joy I experienced flipping through a uh, bestiary. Many games have featured in-game bestiaries, but rarely is it important to actually read to them in much detail. Ah, gotcha. My first attempt at crafting a game based around my love for bestiaries was a game aptly called Bestiary. Okay, a fantasy game in which you would play as a researcher testing the dead bodies of monster corpses with various magical impl implements and attempt to write an accurate bestiary entry for them, nothing pr noting properties as you went. This prototype re really never really made it past the conceptual stage with these concept art pieces and a crudely interacted, interactable UI being as far as I took it. It wasn't fully happy with this direction as it was rather art heavy, seemed too generic and felt little like the activity that inspired it. New magic. Skip ahead a while, and my wife and I both up getting jobs as actors at a local fantasy theme park called Evermore Park, in which she played a playful fairy, and I voice, voiced and puppeteered this big monster called the Fae King. Ah, okay. Hmm. Evermore Park. Uh, the park gave me a lot of improvisational freedom to its actors, and my wife and I both wound up really stretching some creative muscles while we were there. Every day we'd cry up crafting stories on the spot for guests and improvising scenes with other actors. Eventually, many of the actors quit or were let go, but the park left a substantial creative void within many of the people who worked there, myself included. As time went on, I sorely missed performing and improvising with other actors and the constant but rewarding creative challenge of tail weaving and lore crafting on the fly. During the pandemic, as things felt increasingly dire and lonely, I wrote up a new design document entitled 1 800 Best Theory. A game about. Is it Best Theory or Beast Theory? It's not that Beast, it's Beast. Beast. It's how you say it, right? It's like the, the old, the old, like Final Fantasy monster manual shit, right? Beast Theory. It's either way. I say beast here because it's the beast monsters, you know, Mr. Beast. A game about answering calls for a hotline that prescribes solutions to various kinds of monster infestations. The hope was with the, the caller angle, I'd be able to wrangle a bunch of actor friends into this fun and quick project. Maybe we get a chance to recreate some of the creative spark and finally get to scratch my childhood beast here each. At last, other priorities came up with other projects. I was developing, so 800 beast theory remained on the back burner for another three years. Analog horrors. Okay. At the, at the end of 2022, I released a horror game called Night Signal that I've been trying to finish for the past few years. And while the game didn't perform great financially, it sure seemed to re re resonate with those in the YouTube comment section. Because I'm a weak human who craves validation. Naturally, I read each and every comment as it came in. Uh, I'd see some people say Night Signal reminded them of something called Analog Horror. I gave it to curiosity and started going down this Analog Horror rabbit hole. Okay. Once again, I immediately fell in love. Here's what this incredibly fascinating subgenre horror that oozed with creativity and secondhand approach to storytelling, and while being wrapped in an instantly recognizable and nostalgic aesthetic. Gemini Home Entertainment, in particular, quickly became a favorite with its more subdued approach in presenting its horror as so matter of fact, factly, buried inside informational videos about mundane topics like wildlife and camping and the Lunar Archives. During my newfound love affair with analog horror, it occurred to me at some point that the genre would be a perfect match for 1-800 Beast Theory gameplay concept. And right away I revived the pitch and started on crafting a working prototype. I set it quickly on a Windows 95 inspired interface since analog horror was frequently channeling, channel, channeling 90s era media formats. And I felt like the only natural digital equivalent. Uh, I crafted this quick proof of concept piece before building the interface in engine and, and iterating it from there. The new working title was now Lunar Archive, as I tentatively con decided the new concept would revolve around aliens. Okay, this would have been interesting. At the time, the idea was that the aliens slash monsters could be from anywhere in the world, since they opened up the largest number of creative possibilities. I struggled to come up with interesting monsters in such a broad setting. However, it didn't really feel scary to read about a monster that lives nowhere near me. It lives in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these. The best theory, beast theory, I don't know how you fucking say it. Best. The best. Okay. The best. The best. Increased the felt like it needed to be more personal to be scary. So I decided the monster should be all things that live in your house. Out of curiosity, I asked my wife uh, one day if she knew any of the folklore about monsters that live in your house. The answer was goblins. 
Oh, hell yes, now we're talking. I, I excitedly grabbed one of the sketchbooks so I could doodle some weird gooboos. Gooboos. As the, and the new, more fitting title idea. Goobin' around. I want to remind you that in Australia, a gobby is a blowjob. Yeah. <clears throat> as soon as I start... <laughs> As soon as I started reading up on the house goblin folklore, I instantly felt like a kid again, and monsters ideas just started flowing out. The first monster design I decided was this Hubfutu. I dove right into Photoshop and started painting my interpretations of a little goblin into a photograph of a living room. Uh, Trevor Henderson style. I gave him a little troll doll style tufts and some simple slits for eyes, trying to evoke a Guillermo de del Toro spirit of the grounded, scary, but whimsical. I don't know about this guy. He made... He made... Um, Pacific Rim. <laughs> That's the only thing he's known for. Only thing. Uh, hob Anatomy. After drawing my first hob, I got a little carried away in my sketchbook, dreaming up a different varieties of these weird little guys and detailing how they would function. Different hair and false faces would denote different species and bring them closer in line with the big-nosed goblin designs everyone was familiar with. Alert. Calm alert. I like that. <laughs> um, Faye for days. That is just duende. That is complete duende. It didn't take long for me to go deep diving into Wikipedia to discover more stories of Faye and begin interpreting them under the lens of my newfound design ethos. Treating each creature as thought it was simply some kind of bizarre animal. Uh, Okay, the idea for in inflatable trolls came from a mix between the folklore of trolls and spriggans, where spriggans were said to be small creatures that could grow to enormous sizes. When I read about this, it, it made me think of the puffer fish. Blech. And I laughed as I tried to picture what such a creature would be, look like when deflated. I gave this ability to the trolls because folklore usually portrayed them as too big to enter people's homes, and spriggans felt like they had plenty of distinctive qualities already. Blech. That's just a, that's just a butter man. Why do I do this to myself? When drawing monsters, frequently I would find myself having to paint the entire monster zone to get a certain poses to feel accurate, before erasing parts of them later to hide them behind some furniture or blurring them into oblivion. And then, of course, this would be crunched into tiny pixels by the, by the end anyway. Less is more, after all, but I still had to draw the more to get there. Silly scarce. I'm scared a lot by stupid, silly things. As such, both humor and horror can feel like one and the same sometimes. When I read about the stories of the puka, <laughs> who pretended to be a horse just to just to buck people off or to scare them for a laugh, I thought of what the indoor modern equivalent would, might be, and immediately thought of those viral photos of tiny dogs creepily staring at their owners. This is the result, and it might be my proudest artistic achievement. <laughs> He's a pretty good drawer. That's a very good-looking dog. You know? I gotta say, you know, gnome problem. Uh, the gnomes in a particular may have suffered the most from the re reduction in image f fidelity when compared to the paintings. So here they're all in their higher definition glory. Check them out. Check out them little guys. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Look at that guy. Again, just kick him. Just kick him. Okay, I spring and spy. The spring by far made the hardest creature to spot. All throughout development, I've asked playthroughs to try and find the Spriggan. No one has found the Spriggan. I consider this a failure on my part as a designer, but instead I left it as is in the final product. Make of this as you will. I did not see. I did not realize. I, I couldn't see it. It was all downscaled on the pixels, you know? So he's kind of right about that. I was like, what the f- it's just, eh? Oh, not good. I mean, it's kind of better that way. It's kind of better this way, because, like, you can't fucking see what it is. <laughs> I got a cough. Troll in focus. The troll is another creature that I painted in far more detail before blurring him to hell and back. So here he is in his wrinkly, deflated glory for your viewing pleasure. Bogging around. The bogart is maybe the most traditionally spooky creature I've designed for home safety hotline. With his uncanny human-like face and long slender figure. After reading into Boggart lore and finding out they are sort of the forefathers of our modern-day boogeymen, it seemed only fitting to make the Boogart more traditionally ghoulish. Scruffy fella. The trash gnome was inspired by a fan suggestion described as Oscar the Grouch, but worse. 
The thought of a Muppety creature with a large mouth that lives in trash was too, entertainment, too entertaining to pass up. To create the trash gnome, I took a picture of a raccoon and rearranged the eyes and had to create our scruffy little friend here. This is once again another creature where I created more than would be seen in the end as a result. <laughs> oh, trash gnome, when would you learn? To source the photograph for entries, I would browse free use CCO photography libraries for photos that looked like they would be perfect for photoshopping a monster within. But on occasion, I would stumble upon a photograph that was so intriguing on its own, I would be inspired to write this an entry as it is. So for example, by Tasha Kamrowski was immediately ca captivating and inspired a mirror nymph entry on its own. I changed the skin tone up to, up to the creep factor slightly, but the photo is un otherwise unaltered. Hidden in plain sight. Oh... Oh, I didn't see him before. Wow. I like him. Making people question ordinary objects in their house is both quite funny and quite creepy. So that's something those these fans suggested entries, Soap Sprite and Laundry Gnome, accepted pretty well. I did not see his eyes. Again, same here. The designs for sprites were intended to be a mix between mosquitoes and more traditional traditional fairy designs. In general, I'm frightened of most flying insects, and so I wanted the idea of having a little fairy in your home to give people like me the shivers. You're a wizard. The Warlock Remnants is in fact an edited photograph of me wearing a Halloween mask from my childhood, along with a cheap vampire costume I had from the past Halloweens. Felt cute, might delete later. Hmm. Exclusive deals. The concept of coupons came to me after I received a feedback from demo players asking for more motivation for playing the game. Well, uh, since playing the game poorly would not net you more interesting contact in the form of the consequence cause. I thought that pointless employee discount for products offered by Home Safety Hotline would make for funny yet lower heavy content for high scoring incentives and based the look of the product images of the 90s infomercial ads. A ratty end. Originally, the game over ending was much more simple and to the point, with Carol firing the player and wiping their memory before sending them on their way. After the promotion ending was written, it was decided to come up with something a little bit more whimsical for the game over to better suit the world of Home Safety Hotline. Inspired by Roald Dahl's The Witches, we come up with the idea that Carol should turn the player into a mouse instead. Okay? Wow. On the morning of the shoot, I molded these props from air-drying clay, painted them with acrylic paint, and hastily glued some faux craft store fur onto them. David then held these in front of the camera while I filmed the ending on my living room floor. <laughs> wow. Riddle me this. Originally, the player received a promotion at the end of their shift on Saturday, but I felt like too abrupt to go from an otherwise normal workday to the game's fantastical ending in the span of a single call. After a bit of brainstorming, we wound up co coming with a dedicated final trial day, where you will be call called by cryptic cloaked seller testing cloaked callers testing your knowledge with riddles, all without having access to your database of information. Pace yourself. When the game's ending was right in order for the music to be composed for it early on, this crude animated storyboard or animatic was created in order to dedicate the pacing and structure of the ending so music could be written for it. The, anim the animatic and music would later also serve to guide the pacing of the actual shoot, with, Daming with David shouting out the appropriate cues as we filled. Okay, turn! Cut! 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 That's good! Get gone! The promotion crown. The promotion crown was a unique prop I hot glued together out of various craft store materials, including a small wreath, little curvy sticks, and a fake mushroom. Okay. Given the players only getting their first promotion, the materials involved are all more crude and common than the more lavish crown that the fake Carol wears. Okay. Fake Carol's makeup. In addition to playing the role of Carol, Courtney also designed the final makeup and costume look for the fake Carol in the game's ending cutscene, depicting Carol in her truer, more ancient form. In Courtney's own words, I want to look like a proper swamp witch. <laughs> uh, fake Carol's costume was pieced together by Courtney herself, utilizing st uh, stress netting, faux moss, a stressed black skirt, and final top and all with a crown fashioned from faux twigs and leaves. Wow. So that was a very like do it yourself project, you know. That was that was fun. Oh, that was fun. Just like, hey, let's make some st stuff, you know. But uh Was there anything else I can find? Uh no, okay. That was a very nice, very cool game. Um weekly report. Correct answer. So let's see how many right I got. I started kicking ass on day four. Day five, day six. Day seven was not that great. 
Uh, but man, I kicked ass on day six, five, and four. Not all of them, right? But uh, you know, it's uh, you know. But what do I think of this game? Um, very cool. Very cool. It gave me a little hypnospace outlaw vibes with the net Windows 95. I, I didn't even consider this game to be analog horror because maybe I don't know what analog horror really is. Um, you were legit for the best person I've ever seen at this game. Wow, really? Uh, but <clears throat> this game was uh, was definitely uh, very like throwback in that way. And I, I like that that UI and I like the uh, the sort of lore building about these monsters and stuff like that. I actually relate a lot to what the, the developer was talking about at the beginning and saying like I got a D and D book about all these creatures because I, I I tell a little story. I loved manuals as a kid. And this might not be directly related to this, but I, for example, I would bring my Mario 64 N64 like manual with me on on family trips. And I'd just read the thing over and over again. I just love the illustrations and just reading that shit in the car. Like, I just brought manuals with me from video games, you know? Uh, so you would have, like, you know, old fucking Diablo shit, and it was especially fun if you ever got a hold of, like, a strategy guide. But I was very young, I, I brought the Mario 64 one with me, and I'd just be like, oh, look at this. And part of me was like, you know, the illustration of Mario in his render doing the breakdancing thing, you know, Z and B together, doesn't really look like what it looks like in the game. And you felt like, man, I wish the graphics could be like that. And you you kind of would just, you know, imagine things and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, but I, I also, when it comes to D&D, I never really sat down and played D&D. I know how to play D&D-ish. I just never had the privilege of, like, playing with other people. Mainly because I'm such a social introvert that I don't enjoy spending time with people that much. But uh, one thing that I do enjoy is old school zany fucking D&D. &D. Uh, I'm talking like the first edition where the rules weren't established. <clears throat> and there's a book out there that's just fucking amazing to read. It's called like uh, Gods and Demigods, a D&D &D handbook or something like that. And it introduces like all kinds of re religious figures and Lovecraft shit into D&D. &D. Like 80s D&D. &D. I think it was Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. And at that point, you can, like, introduce Cthulhu and, like, uh, Sumerian gods into your shit. Um, and I can't really read what any of that means. So, like, many, many years ago, I think I was talking to uh, uh, Scooty, uh, Scooty, Hootie, Scott, sorry. Uh, I was asking Hootie, because he plays d and I'm like, can you fucking transcribe what this means? He's like, yeah, you're fucked. Uh, if Cthulhu spawns, you're fucked. You, every turn... You have to like roll a, a, a dice, a, a die, to see if you don't go mentally cuckoo. Uh, and beyond that, if Cthulhu spawns into the world, every creature within like 300 miles has to, has to do this constantly, constantly, every turn. You know, you die of fear. And if you somehow manage to kill this thing, it can like, like spawn immediately afterwards, you know? It's just, <laughs> you know? Uh, but you know, so you would just in this in this um, in this D and D thing, looking at the illustrations stuff. Like I, I can totally relate to what he's talking about. Actually, specifically, you know, I again, I don't really play D and D, but I, I always appreciate a a world building creativity of here's a bunch of random weird monsters and how they fit into things. And 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 I tell you, this is this is gonna be sound, this is gonna sound really fucked up. I love Shadowgate for NES because if you're doing a fantasy setting, the ways to die is often very fun and world building. Okay, this sounds very strange. You're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, it's like, how can I make the player die in horrible ways? You know, and I, I, I love that. I love that kind of shit where like you get sucked into space, you drink a potion, or you play a flute and your throat explodes. It's like, you know, like the old Sierra Adventure games. And it's just like, I, I like that sort of stuff. It like makes makes it feel like I'm really in this world if I can die horrible, you know? I I, I don't know. But uh, anyway, this game was pretty fucking cool. Uh, Home Safety Hotline. It's on Steam. I think it's also on itch.io. And it's just a little fun project. And I think um, 
you know, the 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 length of the game was appropriate. I think uh, just a week of like being an employee here was was pretty damn cool, man. I I enjoyed it, you know. Um, I would say if there's anything this game I didn't enjoy about, but they actually fixed it. Uh, was the font. I, th I thought the font was really hard to read at first, but then it turns out you can actually fix the font in the options, so that was very good. <coughs> but, um, yeah. I want to also apologize through my through my stream of this that I've been reading the dialogue, or not the dialogue, but the text, really badly. Like, I felt like a five-year-old, <laughs> or like, you know, a second grader reading in front of class. I'm like, the goblin, you know. I'm not a very good reader. I can read fast, but I can't read it, like, articulated. You know, so, you know, I kind of stumble over my words and shit like that. But, um, you know, uh, and I also want to apologize for my voice throughout this. I, I've been coughing nonstop. I wish I was a little, like, healthier right now, so I wasn't stuck with this horrendous cough. But, uh, you know, it is um, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, we're going to watch the bonus footage which is all the failed calls. Does anybody have the link to this? I got a cough, actually. <laughs> Let's see here. The bones footage. B -b 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 bonus footage. B -b 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 bonus footage. Let's see here. Uh... Uh, this one, that's a 40 minutes, you want that one? 40 minutes? 40 minutes? That, that might be a little too long. When are you gonna play the new Mario Brothers on NES? I heard there was a new patch. Watch it. I, I mean, I could, I guess, but... Uh... People on chat are linking me wrestling videos instead. Hmm. 2x speed, let's go. What is crypt? Oh, crypt is like a... Oh, you'll see what it is. Here we go. Thank you, Stukamod. Oh, this is 16 minutes. We can watch this one. Some of these actually failed anyway, so it doesn't, like, it's not entirely new stuff. Thoughts on Dollar McChicken not being a McChicken, what, what does that mean? Okay. Thoughts on Helldivers 2, all my friends are playing it, it's making me not want to play it. Can I be that cynical? Can I be that assholeish and be like, can you stop talking and reminding me about it? Because I, I, I don't, I don't really have an, you know, contrarian Joey. I just like I, I, I will play it if if I get time for it, which is probably when everybody else has stopped playing it. But but for me, um, I'm getting overexposed to it, and people are also like pinging me about it, uh, and they're like, Joel, they released a DLC for it. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck it is, you know? <laughs> Dude, you gotta see these drops. They're fucking insane, Joey. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay, anyway. So here is, here is, here is the, the bonus footage, as I said. And also, here's all the wrong calls in the game. If you fuck up, uh, you get this. Again, uh, on day four, five, six, I did really well. So, uh, I could skip to that, but we'll, we'll just see, see this. It's like 15 minutes. 15. John here again. I got beef with you. Your people gave me bad info. <laughs> what you said to us didn't have anything to do with our problem. A problem. I'll be sure to tell our friends not to be bothered, Colin. Hey, Gabagoo. <laughs> hey, sorry. I don't want to get anyone in trouble, but I called recently about some noises I was hearing, and the info I was sent seems to be incorrect, as <laughs> I just found a family of mice in my attic. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm you got sure mice. You got really mice. Classic. Just thought I'd give you a 
Yeah, I'll, I'll tap and let you know. Ah, ba 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 ba. Okay. Heck. Thank you. That's strike two with you people. First, you tell me there's. You know, there's there, there's a lot in this game. A lot of people call again. Eventually, I will recognize it's the same three people putting on all their voices. They're all staring at me now. They want me to. They want me to climb inside the tunnel. I must go inside. I must pay for my. You're being funny with our goddamn flag, boy. No, sir. I'm sorry. I did not know. <laughs> hey, it's me! It's me! Thanks for nothing, jerk. Bye. Okay. Mike. Are you jerking it? <laughs> Bye, Mike. Hot again. Ah. Thanks for nothing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Bye. It's still crawling in the walls. Those instructions you said didn't work at I all. I need this. I'm going stir crazy here. I still haven't been able to sleep. I hope you all rot. Hey, yeah, thanks a bunch for the terrible advice you sent me. My kid just fell through the frickin' wall from all the damage they dealt. We found out on our own what was going oh. on. Bye. Uh, I don't know what this weird info you sent me means, but I tried it and uh, it didn't fix the faucet. Oh. I'm calling a plumber. Thanks a lot for wasting my time. What are these useless instructions you sent me? I still can't remember her. I still can't see her face. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, so I've been sleeping on the couch and now the pointy things are on womp, the womp. I'm using and my legs are burning now. I have no idea what the point was of that stupid info packet you sent me, but it's definitely coming from me. Mm. Guess I have to shower every day now. Thanks for making me figure this out on my own. You're welcome. <laughs> Hey. I followed every instruction your people sent me, but I'm still getting cracks on my wall. Mm. Uh, my daughter is called Pest Control. And she told me not to call you anymore for help. Oh. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Gary! Disgusting. Ash. It wasn't the faucet at all. It was this thing inside of me? It's <laughs> grown in my garden. Saw the X-ray. It's horrible. It's disgusting. Please, I'm in so much pain. Get it out of me. Tell the doctors to get it out of me. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma. Kit Bogard. What kind of business are you running? I took the advice you sent us and nothing has changed. 
Now I'm about to go into the attic myself to see if I can't find out for myself what's happening. So mm. the least you could do is stay on the line to help. Sucks to suck. You know, you say you seem a lot upset. I'm gonna make it better. Oh, Germa. There. I mean, sucks to suck. No. That info you sent was garbage. The really? cracks are getting larger, and now the basement is flooding. You can tell your supervisor that you were no help whatsoever. I'm taking this into my own hands. Oh, I didn't do it in time. The holes, there's holes everywhere on my face. The darkness will help. <laughs>
<laughs> They're suffering. People are suffering. And you're playing Domino. <laughs> oh, I know. Calm down. that we have faith in you and we know you can do it we know you've got everything it takes to accomplish whatever your heart desires that dream you're going for that career you want that recognition you're seeking it is yours <laughs> Bye. Charles. Ah. Uh. Oh, sorry. That's the leprechaun. That's a leprechaun. Edward remind me of it's like a is it Drew Carey <laughs> oh really you get the shotgun get the shotgun <laughs> I see it so that Drew Carey dentures out yeah do you get the gun Okay, well, hope you got it. Sheila, here again. I hey, how you doing? Recently to ask about some buzzing in my cupboard and the mm. instructions I was sent d didn't work. Mm. I still hear the, the, the buzzing and it's giving me the most awful headache. Oh, oh, it's in my teeth. It's in my teeth. You got, you got beasts in your teeth. Damn. It's true. Uh, my husband had started using a machine for sleep apnea 
Oh, oh. Oh, well, you're I welcome. I think we'll be getting in touch with the new doctor, so I suppose we're no longer in need of your services. Well, congratulations. Day. Have a good day. You know what I mean? Ah. <laughs> Carla! <laughs> Having a bad day, Carla? Rachel. Hello? Hello? I need help. The instructions didn't help. I Ooh. don't know what to do. Oh. My poor puppy Meatball, there's, there's oh. two of him. Well, I this is more, more fun. Body. I, uh. I don't know what the other one is doing. Uh. He's watching me closely. Yeah, it's just dogs. Standing up. Yeah, it's just dogs. Well, you just watch the thing. You know what to do. You know, you just get Kirk Russell in on that. You know, you just call him. I don't know. Oh, that was it. That was the last one. Well, that was thoroughly disturbing. <laughs> so what you get for naming it the meatball. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's the game. Uh, that's, that's that's what happens if you... Uh, you should see the rat ending. Do you have the rat ending on YouTube? Could being turned to a rat be that bad, though? I mean, you wouldn't have to, like, pay rent. You could move into anyone's house and not pay anything. You know. You ain't gotta care about anything except cheese. Cheese. You you pay rent instead. You become the guy in the email. <laughs> uh, here we go. Here's all the endings. All right. So here's here's what happens if you become if you fuck up, which I got the good ending in this game. I did okay actually. Um here's the bad ending apparently. Um Hang on, let me see if I can get this right. There we go. I got the bad ending like three times. So, so how do you get the bad ending? It's just like your rating is so poor that they sentence you to uh, become a mouse. You become Jerry. Okay. All right. So again, it, this is what happens if you play good, like we just did. You know, seen this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's, here's the bad one. Here's the bad one. Don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. Hello. Hello, employee. Supervisor Carol here. Mm. We've been watching you for some time, and I must say that we have been rather disappointed in your oh. performance here. Oh. Many of our callers' lives have been altered for the worse thanks to your negligent answers. Oh. Your failure to treat your work here with the gravity it deserves has unfortunately forced us to make a very difficult choice in regards to your continued employment at HSH. Oh. Effective immediately, your employment here has been terminated. Bye. We wish you the best in your future endeavors. No, the show at McDonald's means so much for me! Shit! But I am Burger King! Fuck! Okay, yeah. Let's see what happens soon. <laughs> you are unemployed! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix this. Okay, hang on. You are a wrestler in Spider Man. <laughs> Randy Savage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> New job. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that unemployment shit. I'm Randy Savage now. <laughs> okay. Uh, great game. Really fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, go check that game out yourself. Maybe you'll find a uh, secret ending or something that I found. <laughs> you are a Slim Jim. Home safety wrestling. Wrestling. 
Okay, anyway, guys, uh, fun game. I'll be right back with a game called Crypt. Don't go nowhere.